Um, this is my micro irrigation engineering exams coming up. So this is some study stuff just to prepare for it. Um, so saturation capacity, the matrix suction of soil is almost so it's equal zero. So it starts at similar negative. Relative proportion of sand, salt, and clay is classed as the soil texture. Among the predominant soils of India, the second largest is black soil. It's not. Uh, water movement in soil. Um, how do I change this thing over here? Water movement in topsoil and subsoil zones are respectively characterized as well, they infiltrate and they percolate and they're down below a uh, this is where you're going to match up. Uh, your ideal is without viscosity, so E is so PE, PE, real fluid is with viscosity, B, so RB, so PE and RB, so it's C, C. Um, this is pretty easy one. You remember fill capacity is a real low, low pressure, so that's C, PC. It's only one with PC, D. Not gonna do any maths questions, stuff that. Sorry. <laughs> so we'll go to the next one. This is into week two now. Uh, this method, which used only temperature to estimate the potential evapotranspiration is the form weight. Water crop, it's a plus of everything. Okay. Amongst the four distant growth stages of seasonal crops for maximum coefficient KC is during the, the, the mid season. Identify the appropriate method for direct measurement of evapotranspiration and it's lysometric. Uh, mass, operation loss of one mil per day from one hectare area in cubic meters per day is 10. These are joining up questions. So anemometer is to do with wind, so R2, only one of them, B. Radios, so that goes um, radiation, so T1, T1. Week three, which one of the following is not a scientific method of irrigation scheduling? This is pretty funny, eh? Like, everyone can get this right. Is it soil indicators? Is it water-based? Is it, do you go off your neighbor's field or is it cl um, climatological data? Yeah, you don't go with your neighbor's field. <laughs> Identify from the following the instrument used in plant indicator based methods for irrigation time scheduling. Well, they reckon it's infrared thermometer. Yeah. This, is, this is a course done in India. Um, leaf water potential is measured by, well, they say it's pressure bomb, it's a poten potiometer in digital that we would go out and buy. Um, current meter is used to measure, the current meter is used to measure, well, in talking in irrigation terms, it's a flow velocity. In electrical terms, it'd be amps. Recognize the correct equation. Well, these ones are all top, it's B, C's. Please match the group. NCM meter, that's a soil water potential. So it's two. It's two. Yep, group D. I would match the group.
effective rooting depths of the 4321 rule. Deficit irrigation is stressed irrigation, T3, it's 2 and M2. Or, Maths. Volute and diffuse are types of centrifugal pumps. The point of intersection of HQ cubes or pump characteristics and system curve is the pump operating point. Applied RAM works on the principle of water hammer. You know what that new pipes? I'll get that in my pipes. Irrigation, water, quality, sodium absorption ratio stands for sodium absorption ratio. Total dissolved solids, TS is irrigation water is measured by a gravimetric. All your little pens, hell of a lot easier. I remember this one from P, the Don is a single person. So um, P2, B. And duplex is two pistons, S2. Oh, it's an S2, it's A. Big five, humming along. Identify from the given irrigation methods, which method of irrigation is also referred as localized. Furrow, border, micro, or spat. The micro is pre localized. Identify from the following characteristics of micro irrigation, which one is not correct. It doesn't require high pressure. Water is applied at soil surface, appears as a small stream or fountain in bubbles. Air bubbles. <laughs> Spaghetti tubing is used in rain, micro, drip, or bubble. It's used in the micro. Drip. It's micro. The flow regime is known and fully turbulent when Reynolds number is. Above 10,000. That's the same number that um, oxygen absorbs 10,000 times faster in uh, air than it does in the water. Water is applied slowly below the soil surface using inline emitters. Water is applied slowly below the surface, subsurface, here you can see. The match. Furrows is cutbacks. Yep, I'll find these. Orifice flow to tortuous path. Pretty fully turbulent. It's T1. A. Major head loss. Head loss due to friction. Frictions is the major bit, and the fittings is the minor bit. So P4. 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 Yep, there's one. B, B, correct. Right. Six, identify from the following devices the device not relevant to fertigation through micro irrigation. A fertilizer drill machine. Among the various methods of fertigation, the variation of you know, nutrient concentration supply with time is minimal in. Injection. Oh, right. 
Venturi operates using a Benali equation of hydrocyclone filter. Solid heavier particles begin to separate from water at C conical. Match the match. Well, I remember why, because discs is plastic. So P3, C. Six, seven. In micro irrigation, drip emitters are usually made of <laughs> densely polyethylene, PVC, polypropylene, or low density polyethylene. Polypropylene. PP, the process of gradually wetting of an, in, of an initially dry soil is known as sorption, you know, adsorption or absorption. According to the ASAE recommendation, the pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet end of the hydrocyclone sand filter should not exceed 70 kPa. On the following components, drip emitters identify the one that's not an emitter component. You don't have a nozzle. Process of making 3D solid objects from digital file is printing it. Change the direction. But with the printing too, though, they've made some really good um, printing of their own tips of the emitters. And you can get some programs off, um, off them or their websites and stuff and um, for free. And they um, you can print out your own little tips, high flow ones, and different stuff that test them. It's pretty cool. Let's change the direction of water flow from 90 to 45. The fitting requirement is elbow. Go match. And this one, the end cap. There's only one end cap to the laterals. Cap off anything else, you, you don't really want to cap it. You have to cap off the laterals. So T for submain to laterals, and then you have your ones branching off that. Here, maker. Well, I remember this is because it's a G code. Yeah, G to P4. B. Gate, identify the following components, which is not the component of the micro sprinkler. Head spaghetti, connecting nozzle or a striking arm. And striking arms. Low rate of micro sprinkler having an orifice control emitter is influenced by no, the width diameter. Increased diameter, it flows more. A small basin of fire required to guide water in. C for bubbles. A bubbles. Energy dissipation is not required in, in we've got no energy, it's gravity. Everything else uses energy. And gravity is a yes, a form of energy, but that's the one they're talking, it's not any um amplified energy. Water is forced to form a whirlpool at the center of the emitter in vortex. Or whirlpool. See? See? Match semi permanent systems. Semi permanent portable ish T2. T2. We'll say striking arm. Striking arm. It's one rotating head. Yep. Sprinkles. So the answer is. Just so
impact sprinklers there, that's, that's the striking arm ones we are just talking about. E1, B. Too easy, too easy. All these hard maths questions. Weak. Nah, water application rate of the sprinkler is affected by wind speed, temperature, infiltration capacity of the soil or the crop. Mains and sub mains of the sprinkler system are installed permanent while the laterals are portable. Well, it's semi permanent. The air release valve in the main line should be installed at. We want air to go out, air travels upwards, so it's got to be at the highest point. Generally, sprinkler heads are lubed with. You don't want any oil or grease in your ruddy water, so they've got to be water lubed. Check trajectory is an important characteristic of overhead drip bubble micro jet overhead. Mathematics. See so, ya. Yeah. <laughs> Universal testing machine is used to determine the universal testing machine. Internal pressure creep rupture test is conducted for hydraulic characteristics of a drip lateral pipe. Proper dispersion of carbon black is essential for a good UV stabilization. Solar PV modules that are arranged in series parallel the combination are known as a PV array. Solar PV plant independent from the grid is called, or well, it's independent, standalone. Black is graphite, P3. S2. That's that. This is stress cracking. Yeah, on the street. With electrical engineering background, it's the inverters, the converters from AC to DC, from DC to AC. Maximum power point temperature, standard temperature coefficient, variable frequency drives. Identify the controller from the following DHT22 Audrino Mega LM35 or capacity soil moisture sensor. That's a sensor, it's not a controller. Audrino is the go. The device uses electromagnetic actuator. In automating micro irrigation systems, is <laughs> it's solenoid. That's pneumatic. That's pneumatic and rapid pinion. It's a ball joint. <laughs> Among the following identified WSN based technology that has the longest communication range Zigbee, Bluetooth, LoRa, or Wi Fi. It's LoRa, long range. Quantity of a commodity that sellers are able to willingly offer for sale at different prices per unit of time is network topology that consists of a central hub for communication is star topology. We go on electromagnetic bracket. 
linear motor electromagnet, electric actuator, is a linear motor P2. B. Breaks. So uh, this is good for you techies, not for me. Uh, So the next one is to R1, R2, R2, Apache Web Services, Apache. Okay, R2, D, D. <laughs> this one, okay. Magnetic sensor sensors for metal. R1, MC. Week 12, finally come to the last week. Thank you. Identify the following which one is not correct. Oh, this, the, you want the net present value, you want that above to accept. This is the first one. Blaine's equation, which one's right? Or well, you've got to have a negative. Let's see. Cost of micro irrigation pipes increases with the increase in size, the energy cost, electricity cost, pumping it. The corresponding pipe should go. Should go down. That's the general electricity cost. Right, so it says. Um, defining exact location in the field it is done by using a GIS sensor or robot or GPS. <laughs> the overall potential of micro irrigation down in India is 70, 69, sorry. Matchy match. Drones, they're unmanned. R4, two R4s. Artificial intelligence. Machine mode, T2. Oh, I'm on T2, A. And PMS, PMKSY was in 2015. Yeah, that's it, we've come to the end. Yay. All of this, so now I can show you some, this is the slides that I took from the classes that I'll just skip through. This thing's coming up. Based on soil indicators. Intensities, different tensiometers, soil moisture reading. They're cool. The porous probes, they're, they got um, their calcium carbon or something in it, and they really, really work really well. That's cool. Right? Look at that to measure the stem. So cool. Psychrometer. This is a really good one. This is on the, I should put a skin past it. This is just the water potential. It shows you in the roots and how low it is. And then as it gets higher, it gets um, more so up there and what the atmosphere is. And that's why there's a gradient. Water potential. Yeah. Fractions, different measurements, forum, soil, water base. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a balance out your soil. There's quite a lot of these slides I took. Critical growth strategies for crops. Maximum versus effective rooting depth. Yeah, how cool is that? So you only want to irrigate the roots, so you don't want to you know, waste your time. 
that's where you get the two four see the two four three two one rule because there's four um, forty percent extraction thirty percent here twenty percent there and ten percent there so that's the rooting rule of thumb. Advantages irrigation schedule. Well, there's heaps of irrigation schedule advantages. You can read them. <laughs> it's all measurement techniques. Yep, that's what you're supposed to have to be pretty cool. Improved gravimetric method. Oven drying. Here you go. Put it in the oven and do the same thing. Sensiometric techniques. You can have a sensiometer in the ground. Measuring. Get my Any of those chips and things are the same. Four, they're rad. Davis is a good brand for them. Yep, I use them. And these capacitive sense, you want capacitive ones, not resistive ones. <laughs> the resistive ones, they build up a salt skein on them because, you know, water dries and then dries left with that film. So that's why. And then that's going to add to the thing and stuff up. So they've got to be capacitive. Sensing plant water monitoring. Yep. Let's monitor. We're going to monitor the xylem sap and the uh, stomata um, conductance as well. It's cool. Psychrometer. Psychro means cool <laughs> in Greek. We got 10 minutes left. Water flow measurements through the venturi. Or if it's need a ouch. Follow up protection efficiency. System. It's a pretty good flow chart. Look at that. It shows you what, um, what you've got, what you can use, what will be the outcome. Compost power, how to work it out. Tolerance, indigenous water lines. Yeah, look at, look at the swinging basket. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, it's an ingenious way of getting water upwards. So you can get the auger as well, or the swing basket. It's cool, that's it? These primitive ways they teach you. Oh, look here they are. See, you know, one of those questions was the Don, single person. Different wheels to that. The pulley, the chain method, water wheel. Or you can just use a pump as we do. But if you haven't got electricity, there's always a way. The main components of a hydraulic pipe. That's your main gears, centrifugal, selector. Water quality parameters. Yeah, and you want to see for the different, um, you can get things to test individual elements. So your spectrophotometer can test at specific wavelengths to see if that um, mineral is in there and at what amount. It's pretty cool. There you go, and I've got a price for you. That's Australian, 550 bucks, not bad, see? Water quality, salinity, oh yes. Yeah, salinity is full on. <laughs> This is pretty cool. So if your, if your salinity gets above in the highs, which is about 1400 ppm, yes, it's high. So you know you're gonna have a problem with conductance. Wide lines, irrigation, sodicity. This is form, this is the sodium absorption ratio, where if the sodium's too high, your salts, your sodium's too high, sorry, you can't kind of swap it. So good luck. Yep, is the difference between the two. So this is the, is the impact on the exchangeable um, cations and salinity is the impact of soluble salts. Yes. So you see some their bloody oath that are related. This is a pretty good reading too. You can have all my free stuff here. <laughs> Leaching is a process, yeah, adds sufficient amounts to the soil. That's how you flush. So I'm saying IPH, yeah. Iron toxicity, uh oh. 
So you don't see all the rust, look at it. So you can fix it. How do you fix that? <laughs> The flush or use organic things clean um, clean sources. This is a really good one. Major chemical constituents in water associated with clogging. So that's what you really got to look out for. If you've got a high, um, like for instance in the deserts, you'll see a high calcium. It'll um, clog up. You'll get all this white scum. It'll be all over your pipes and shit like that. And um, especially heating elements and stuff for them. Just an example. Um, irrigation. I don't know how good that is. There's a setup for fields. This is really cool. This is, tells you the difference in the, um, the types of sprinklers you have. So you've got drip method, sprinkler method, and a surface feeding method. So, surface feeding method, so you feed it down here and it's goes down so it really goes wet and then dry. It takes that long. Sprinkle it, it's a little bit shorter. And the drip is up here, look at that. Heaps, it's perfect. So it never gets down near wilting point. It always stays just at the right amount. So that's why, um, anyway, so this drip. We've got five minutes left. There's the dripping patterns. It's pretty cool. Yeah, see the different dripping patterns. Sand, sand, loam, loamy. That's for fruit trees. You want to have a couple outside. Just to work out drip area. Where to store your, um, if you, where to place your um, emitters and, and lateral lines, sub lines, and your crops. Depends how you want them. System layout, yes, here's where they made all their bits. Actually made them up. <laughs> Test for them, it's cool. All these different tests and stuff. Fertigation versus fertilization. There you go. Conventional fertilization or fertigation. Fertigation is to go. You apply according to the needs of the nutrients following the uptake of the crop. Exactly what it needs. This gets in so detailed. See other method everywhere. Drip methods only around where it drips, and so you get good branching, very effective. This is actual fertilizers, the actual amounts that you want to um, properly give them from doing commercial, um, from doing your um, tests. It tells you what solubility it is because you can see, like this one here, for instance, using potassium chloride, it's going to clog it up way faster, three times faster than it will with this um, potassium sulfate. So it's an example of what type of potassium you can use. And then you get micro fertilizers. You have to do proper fertigation. Yeah, different. That's the comparisons. Of actually like ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, potassium sulfate, potassium chloride, and we go on. Safety is very important. Always put all sorts of flow and check turn off valves everywhere. So there you go, you can work out there's a formula to work out the estimation of fertilization, fertilizer requirements. And then it goes further on to get real specific. Introduction, uh, filtration, types of filters now. Because you got our pre filters and um, stuff like that to make sure you turn to it. You want to be feeding it heaps of calcium or something like that. You want to filter all that shit out and give it what it wants. Filter. The cool emitters they made. This is a different set of your wedding pattern. Absorption, desorption. That's cool, berry. That's really rude. These we go through, pumping through the weeks of um, literature here. We've got at least halfway through the course now. <clears throat> you said to make your own 3D printing and what you do. <laughs> There's your wedding patterns. 
that's pretty cool. Different types of sprinkler heads give different wetting patterns. Drip irrigation is the best to summarize. It wastes the less as well. It's definitely under the surface, you're getting that little evaporation. Costly to set up, beneficial down the track. And the more bends you put in it too, the less oxygen is amount, it dissolves oxygen is available at the end. Watch the amount of elbows you put in there. See all those elbows, yep, ouch, ouch. Automation. All right, this is getting into your um, font with all your rad sensors. You hook them up to your Adreno. There's all the different component numbers you can get. See so if you want to buy it. Yep, there you go. Saw moisture meters, rad. I'll use one of them. Types of attenuators. Oops, there you go. We're under a minute. Hope you guys liked it. There's your Adrenos and your humidity sensors. <laughs> Hope you had fun. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Oh, we're at the end. Dead set. That's the end. How rad's that? Woohoo! Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, don't know what else to say. That's it. We got to the end. Just in time. Perfect.